Reformation, according to St. Luke, chapter 22. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them, so they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The Gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise be to you, O Christ. He is my rock and my salvation. Thanks be to God. Jesus culminates our October Reformation readings called Famous Reformations of the Bible. He, of course, was and is involved in any reformations of Christian or of church. He has been and always will be. He changes the church when necessary with the Reformation. Not a destruction, a, re a Reformation. And he changes you when necessary with the Reformation. Not a destruction, but a Reformation. A change. A new covenant. 
He helped godly King Josiah find the Bible when it was lost in the temple. When the king said, let's repair the church. And during reconstruction, during a reformation of the temple, a rebuilding, they found the scrolls, which had long been hidden away from wicked governments and sinful priests. And they found the Bible and wept for joy. Jesus was involved in 600 BC through godly King Josiah, and Jesus changed the world. Over a hundred years later, we met the priest Jeshua, who was called to rebuild the temple, having been destroyed uh, in God's judgment by the Babylonians. Jeshua found himself smack dab in the middle of Satan on one side and Jesus on the other, and Jesus won the battle. And the priest was given garments of rich righteousness and the courage to reform the church. And Jesus changed the world. Skip ahead 500 years. And the greatest reformer of them all was born of a virgin, born under law, to redeem those under law. Christmas Day, 2,000 years ago. He was born a church member. He was born into a corrupted church with leaders from the Sanhedrin who had compromised the gospel. He was born under the Roman government. The whole world needed a revival, a savior, a redeemer, and Jesus changed the world. He did not come with armies of angels or fighting with the sword. He came like the other reformers and like Martin Luther in 500 years ago in Germany, armed with the word of God and the word of peace. Not much else except one thing. One thing you will eat and drink from his altar in a little bit. I already mentioned a reformation is not a revolution. It's not like downtown Portland or Minneapolis or the riots on Michigan Avenue in our city. It is a restoration of all things that need to be changed changed with a new covenant, a new way of doing things, a building up, a tearing down of evil and building up of holiness. And there is always a price that comes with change, isn't there? You change your car, there's gonna be a price. You change your home, there's gonna be a price. You change schools, there's gonna be a price. You change jobs, there's going to be a price. You change doctors and health plans, etc. So, with necessary change, here's the price. And he took bread, gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus reformed death 
by dying on the cross and sacrificing his own body as the atoning sacrifice to change the world and change us. Jesus did not reform evil. He destroyed it at its own wicked gain. He turned the murder of the crucifixion into the salvation for mankind. Jesus overcame the world by giving us an eternal gospel message. Not a passing fad or a trendy post or a trendy movement, the eternal gospel. Jesus rose from the grave to reform cemeteries and hospitals and the fears of death and dying from plague or pandemic. Jesus reformed the church, making it universal based on the 12 tribes of Israel, the Old Testament, and the New Testament, the message of the 12 apostles, with Christ himself as the cornerstone of the church. And we have their testimonies today in the complete Bible. Jesus' reforms are hard to catch, mutilate, or change. Listen to how he reforms and maintains his church today. As I mentioned earlier, including the Lutheran Reformation of the 1500s. Excuse me. <clears throat> then I saw, this is John's, uh, St. John, I saw another angel flying in midair and he had the eternal gospel to proclaim to those who live on the earth, to every nation, tribe, language, and people. Okay, from the old covenant church based in Jerusalem, now to the universal church. The angel said in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. So we're saved by faith alone. Worship him who made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. We see God's grace there. This is the revelation of reformations across history the past 2,000 years. A preaching for God against the Antichrist and false prophets on the earth. So for God and against the Antichrists. Christ the King Lutheran Church strives to follow Dr. Luther and his message up there in midair. We are supposed to be a church that stands between God in heaven and man on earth in midair like the Goodyear blimp but if I ask the outreach committee to rent the Goodyear blimp with our message with our gospel message the eternal gospel they couldn't come up with the two hundred thousand dollars to do it yet in reality the gospel proclaiming church is like that angel flying in midair that St. John saw. You should think of angels in heaven or angels down here on the earth, like when Jesus rose from the dead, the angels were there. But we see this created angel or messenger flying in midair. The gospel is not so high in the heavens that we're not able to touch it read it learn it and inwardly digest it 
the gospel is not so low that mobs can destroy it or that our faith can be taken away from earthly powers or that Jesus himself can be destroyed. He can die no more. He is flying in midair above the fray. His gospel is now complete. And we are his messengers hanging there between heaven and earth. So, the word of God. It, it's not up in heaven where I can't grasp this. And it's not based on earth. Its origins are not from the will of man. It's between heaven and earth. So churches that are based on the glory and riches of this world are built on sand because this world shall pass away. And the eternal gospel, its origins are not to be found in this world. All those people whose churches are earthbound will die broke, poor, and beggars. Churches that are based on holy rollers who think they're so much better than everyone else and that perfection, a perfect life, can be attained here below on the earth are built on sand. They are Pharisees, hypocrites, and sinners, and need to admit it fast. Churches that proclaim the eternal gospel, kind of from earth, kind of from heaven, in between God and people, well, by God's grace, they have it just about right. A happy life on earth, and happy forevermores in heaven can't lose. Jesus is the perfect reformer of souls and lives of heaven and of earth. And his church, his church is in, is in the middle there, proclaiming to the world the eternal gospel of peace. I don't know, I, I guess Revelation was written in 100 in AD, and we talk about today about 5G. Well, 5G, 5 Shmi for your phone. Big deal. Not impressive. That angel has been flying in midair for 2,000 years, and we get to join it proclaiming the gospel of peace to every nation, tribe, language, and people, people of all ages, in a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and the springs of water. Jesus culminates our October sermon series on famous reformations of the Bible. He, of course, was and is involved in any necessary changes in the church and in you and me, his Christians. He has brought us a new covenant, a religion of love based on grace alone, received by faith alone, and found in scripture alone. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise, in my blood, which is poured out for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ. Amen. And the creed is on page two. The Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We worship God with our gifts. The offering plates are static and in the entryway of the chapel of the church, but we offer uh, prayer and music at this time. You may be seated. <laughs> 